Welcome to Excel 2010 statistics video number 89. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for chapter 14, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, I'm going to shoot it full screen. Going to be lots of little details, so you might want to blow it up into full screen when you're watching it. Now, in this video, we want to talk about how to calculate sample covariance and coefficient of correlation. These will help us determine whether the relationship between two variables is either inverse indirect or negative, or it is direct or positive. Now, in our last couple of videos, we saw how to do some charting. In our last video, we saw how to take this example of temperature and sales of chicken soup at a grocery store, x and y, plot it, plot the x bar and the y bar, and then look for the preponderance of where the deviations are. Quadrant 1, 2, 3, 4. We talked about how if they're up here, that means the deviation for any particular uh, data point up here, this one would be below the x bar but above the y bar, and down here it would be below the y bar but above the x bar. That means we'll have a deviation that's positive and negative, and down here negative and positive, and down here it's positive and negative. So if we were to multiply these, it would give us a measure, right? Because negative times a positive, positive times a negative are negative. So the preponderance would be all negative. So it could tell us, hey, this is an inverse or negative or indirect relationship. Whereas if we had these quadrants and the preponderance of values were in quadrant 1 and 3, positive times a positive, negative times a negative, the result would be a bunch of deviations, the product of the deviations that are positive. And that's what these new formulas here for sample covariance and this formula for coefficient of correlation are all about. So we want to see how to calculate this here. All right, so we have our temperature, x, and our sales of chicken soup, y. We need to calculate the deviations for the x's for the y's. Then we're going to square them. And we're actually going to calculate standard deviation like we did back in chapter 3. Then we're going to calculate uh, the deviations multiply to move on to covariance and correlation calculations. All right, well, so let's calculate our deviations. So for our x's, I'm going to say the particular x minus, you know what, I wonder if I could blow this up just I'm doing this. All right, so the deviation for this x, this particular x, hey, the particular x minus x bar. And I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock it. Control Enter and copy it down with my Angry Rabbit. Now, when you copy it down, you see how it copied down the formatting too, and it replaced that line. So I want to use the Smart tag and say Fill without formatting. I'm going to do the same thing for now the y values, particular y minus y. And those values there, I'm sorry, I should have showed you those. I just calculated the average equals particular y minus the y bar. F4 to lock it, control enter. That's got some formatting. I don't want that. I'm going to come up here and apply general. I'm going to copy this down. So you fill without formatting. OK, so now we have our deviations. And we know if we add our deviations, we will get 0, right? That's why back when we learned our standard deviation, we squared them so we could have some value to then add, divide by the count minus 1, which gives, it, which gives us a type of average of the deviations. And we took the square root to undo that uh, uh, squaring there. So I'm going to add these up just to see that, yes, in fact, these are, should be equal to 0. I'm going to Alt equals. Alt equals, when you highlight two cells like that, automatically goes up and gets puts the sum function in and adds the number. So sure enough, they're 0. Now, let's square these, because we can't add those up. Equals, and I'm going to click on that deviation for x, shift 6, which is the exponent symbol, 2. So that's squaring it. Control Enter. And actually copy it down, and then fill without formatting. Do the same here. 
the deviation for y, caret 2. Control Enter, and then copy it down. I'm pointing that fill handle, that to smart tag, and say uh, fill without formatting. All right, now we have added those up. Let's go ahead and multiply our deviations. Equals the deviation for x times the deviation for y. Control Enter, and then copy down, and I'm going to say fill without formatting. You can see. So, and let's look at this chart too. So when we multiply these, it looks like they're all negative. There's two, three that are not. And it looks like all of them, there's one, two, three that are not. The rest are negative. So it's kind of working like we thought, right? Quadrant two <coughs> four, um, we're going to get resultant negative numbers when we multiply the deviations, and sure enough, we do. Now let's go ahead and make our calculation. Now first, let's add these up, because I want to calculate standard deviation. Alt equals, I'm going to redirect the dancing ants, and then I'm going to copy and paste. All right, so I got that. Now I'm going to add up all of the the product of the two deviations, Alt equals, I'm going to redirect it. Just those, not those empty cells there, and then Enter. Now with those totals, we can go ahead and calculate our standard deviation for the x and y values, covariance, and then correlation. All right, so in order to calculate standard deviation, well, we have the sum of the x deviation squared. So for x, we would take the square root sum of the deviation squared divided by n minus 1. Enter. OK, so that gives us x standard deviation. y, square root, sum of all of the y deviation squared divided by n minus 1. All right, so standard deviation is a measure that tells us how fairly our mean represents our data points. In terms of scatter about these lines, if this was close, if these were close to zero, right? So if the x standard deviation was close to zero, that means all these points would be right at the line. If the zero, if the um, standard deviation, sample standard deviation for y was near zero, all of these values would be right clustered around that line. All right, so that's standard deviation. Now. Sample covariance. Remember what we said. If the preponderance of values are in quadrant 2 and 3, we're going to get a bunch of uh, negatives times positives and positives times negatives, so the resultant number would be negative. And sure enough, you can see from this column, lots of negatives and just a few positives. So let's go ahead. Here's our formula. We're going to add up, and we did that right here, add them all and divided by n minus 1. So this is sort of like getting an average of the product of the deviations for each data point. So let's come down here, equals, and there is our the total of the product of all of the deviations, sum of the product of the deviations, and I'm going to divide by n minus 1. Now notice we didn't take the square root here, so this is sort of like variance. Right, if we look at standard deviation up here, the inside part under the square root sign, that's variance, right? So this is sample covariance. Ah, co meaning between the two, right? These two deviations multiplied. Well, there's a problem with our units here. Yes, this fact that it's negative tells us that we have an inverse or negative relationship. But there's a problem with units here. So what we'd really like to do is calculate coefficient of correlation. So this top part is co sample covariance. We're simply going to convert it to units of the two standard deviations multiplied together. This calculation will give us a number from negative 1 to 1. That's the range for this calculation. 0 will mean no correlation. 
positive one will be exactly perfect. All of the, the observed values would be on our, our regression line. Negative one would mean perfect negative or uh, indirect relationship. All right, Any, anything close to one or negative one means pretty strong correlation. Remember, correlation, this is important, correlation is not causation. I spelled that right. Correlation is not causation. Just because we have a strong cor cor correlation and our model can help us to predict, it doesn't mean that the one x is causing the, the, the y. All right, so let's calculate this. We simply take Oh, sample covariance divided by, and I need to multiply. I'm going to use the product function. You could do in parentheses this times this, but I'm just going to highlight those two, and there we go. And so there is our coefficient of correlation. That is um, pretty strong. It means it has a pretty strong negative uh, correlation. As x increases, y decreases. This number here, the closer it gets to minus 1, the more perfect the negative relationship. Now, we did all of this longhand, and in, in large part we did it because of this diagram. If we see you know, the preponderance of uh, deviation points here and how multiplying them kind of gives us uh, a measure that's helpful in understanding the, cal the calculation. But once you get the hang of it, right? you don't want to go through all this. There's some built-in functions. As we saw before, the function for standard deviation of a sample is going to be stdev.s. And I'm going to take our, this is for x, so I'm going to take my x value whoop, and then enter. Ugh. That's a lot of work to calculate that one. I can just use stdev.s. So stdev.s, and I'm going to do the y's. OK, well, if there's functions for both of those, you better believe there are functions for covariance. And this is going to be covariance. This is the one that existed in earlier versions. Now they have one for sample and population. So I'm simply going to take, uh, and a number of functions that we see for slope and intercept, some of them will specify the order in which the x and the y's come. If it is array 1, array 2, then it doesn't matter. I'm going to stick to like uh, slope and uh, intercept, and some of those other ones specify y first. So I'm going to put y first, comma, and then x. Again, this function will calculate either way. You could even prove it to yourself, right? So we'll do the x's. And it's really, it kind of makes sense because it's just figuring out the covariance between these two, right? We have the, de the deviations can be multiplied in any order. All right, now, coefficient of correlation. There's actually two functions. Let me put this over here. The first one is just, you'd think it'd be called something like cor correlation, but it's C-O-R-R-E-L, so Corel. Now, notice how many characters did I have to type C-O-R before I got my uh, function that I could hit tab. I'm going to do Y's, comma, and then X's. Now there's a whoops, there's a second function that does the exact same thing. Equals Pearson, named after Carl Pils Pearson, the statistician who invented this calculation. The reason I like Pearson is because I type equals P and it's the first one that appears tab. It does the same exact thing. There's two functions with different names that do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna get my Y's, comma, and my X's. All right, so standard deviations, we know those tell us how fairly our mean represents all the data points, how much dispersion, how much variation there is in the data points compared to the mean. Covariance, it's kind of a blunt measure that tells us the uh, whether 
the relationship between two variables is indirect, negative, or direct or positive. Coefficient of correlation, however, deals with the unit problem that covariance has and gives us a number between negative 1 and 1. Now again, this is not causation. This is just correlation for our model, which we'll learn in videos coming up. Our model, in terms of predicting, uh, that's a pretty strong correlation. So that means our model might be of some use. Now this is negative, right? As x increases, y decreases. Let's go look at uh, this example right here. And you know, after you do this for a while, you don't have to do all those calculations. You just simply do, if you want covariance, so we'll do the covariance of the sample. And I'm going to do y's and x's. And coefficient of correlation, I'm going to do equals P for Pearson, Carl Pearson. Coefficient of correlation. I'm going to do the y's and the x's. Wow, and so that's that's pretty darn uh, strong uh, positive correlation, right? And one final, actually, let me show you something. Uh, coming up, this r squared, we didn't see how to calculate that. That'll be two videos ahead. But there is a relationship between coefficient of correlation, which tells us the So it tells us the strength and direction of the relationship. Hopefully, I spelled everything right there. And then um, coefficient of determination, if I spelled that right. I didn't spell that right. Which is r squared, however you want to do that. Coefficient of determination, which is our um, R squared, and we'll learn more about this later, but this tells us the goodness of fit for our equation or line or model, because it'll be a model we'll use to predict. All right? And the relationship is coefficient of correlation. If you simply square it, you get R squared. Right? So a lot of times we'll see, in fact, in our up here, notice it's r sub xy to indicate that it's the correlation between two variables. It's an r. So simply by squaring it, that's why they call it r squared, which is really called the coefficient of determination. So if you take, I'm going to put r caret 2 here. Maybe I should add some of this uh, green, because that's what I always do for calculating. You simply have to take your coefficient of correlation, which is an r, and square it. And that tells us our goodness of fit. And you can see right here, 0 0.9055, which rounds to 5.6. There's our r squared. All right, And so we'll talk about coefficient determination more in upcoming videos. Uh, one last. Um, example, we did this one in a couple of videos ago. This is, is there a relationship between years that you've been using Excel and your tested expert level? Well, from this plot, it certainly uh, <laughs> appears that there's not much of a relationship. So I'm simply going to do my Pearson. Take my Ys and my Xs, and it will do all the heavy lifting for me. Not available. The reason why is because that green <laughs> range and that one are not the same size. They need to be the same size. So I'm going to edit that. Okay, ooh, very, very small. So uh, coefficient of correlation, coefficient of determination, or r squared. We simply take that and square it. And that better be what we found up here. And it is. All right, uh, so in this video, we saw how to calculate longhand our standard deviation, co sample covariance, and coefficient of correlation. All right, uh, next video we'll do slope and intercept. See you next video.